As we're connecting into a Cisco router for administrative purposes, we've got different protocols that we could use. For example, we could use Telnet or we could use a secure shell. We probably don't want to use Telnet though because it is not encrypted. And if somebody were to capture our packets, it would be very easy for them to see what our password is and watch our entire transaction with the router. So it's considered a best practice not to use Telnet. What's a better option? Secure Shell. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and in this video, we're going to discuss how to set up Secure Shell so that we can secure Shell from one router into another router. And to begin with, we want to discuss why we need Secure Shell, and we've already hinted at it. Telnet is not secure, meaning that the content of our Telnet sessions is sent in clear text. Secure Shell, however, is going to encrypt our traffic, so if somebody were to capture our SSH traffic, they would not be able to read it. And in just a moment, we'll go out to a live interface and we'll see how to very quickly set up Secure Shell and then we'll verify and make sure that it's working. And if you'd like to try this lab exercise on your own, in the description of this video, there's a link where you can download a PDF that contains the topology, the base configs, the tasks, and a complete walkthrough solution. Now let's go out to the live interface and configure Secure Shell. And in this simple topology, we just have two routers. We have the internet router and the R1 router. And to begin with, before we set up SSH, let's attempt to secure Shell from the internet router into router R1. Here's how we could do that. I could say SSH for secure Shell, and we'll do a minus L, and the minus L flag says that I'm about to give the username. And in this demo, we're going to be using a username of Cisco. And I'm going to be connecting to an IP address of 192.0.2.100. That's R1. We attempt to connect, and it says the connection was refused, and that's because we haven't yet set up Secure Shell. So let's do that. Let's go over to R1, and we'll go into Global Configuration Mode. And even though this router already has a host name, that is a required step in setting up SSH. So just for completion's sake, I'll once again say hostname R1. We also have to specify a domain name, and we'll say that the domain name is kwtrain.com. And to specify a domain name, we say IP domain hyphen name and give the domain name. In this case, let's say that it's kwtrain.com. Next, let's define our username and password credentials that can be used to authenticate users that are logging in via SSH. And although I wouldn't recommend this in the real world, just for this lab environment so it's easy to remember, I'm going to use a username of Cisco and a password of Cisco. And I can set that up by saying username Cisco, and I'll say secret Cisco. And by saying secret instead of password, that password of Cisco will show up as hashed text in the running config rather than plain text. So now we have our user database configured, and now we start to configure the security portion by specifying the modulus key size. That's going to be used by our RSA encryption algorithm. This is somewhat similar to using uh, digital certificates with a certificate authority. Not that we have a certificate authority here, but we are using a public and private key pair to do our encryption here on R1. And the strength of that RSA key can be specified by the modulus size. So the bigger our modulus size, the more secure our RSA key. And to generate this RSA key, I'll say crypto key generate RSA and the RSA and RSA encryption, that comes from the uh, developers of RSA, Revest, Shamir, and Adelman. And we'll say RSA modulus. And if we use context-sensitive help, you can see that we have a range of uh, supported modulus sizes. I'll say 2048 in our example. We'll press Enter. And that generated our RSA keys, the public and private keys. And we have a couple of versions of Secure Shell. I'm going to use Secure Shell version 2. And that's a best practice recommendation. And now we have our RSA keys generated. So the next thing we want to do is go into our virtual TTY lines that we're going to be connecting into using Secure Shell. And we want to make sure that we're not supporting Telnet. In fact, let's only support a Secure Shell. And to do that, I'll say line VTY. And I want to apply my settings to all 16 of my VTY lines. So I'll specify a range of VTY lines starting at 0 and going through 15. That's going to get all 16 of my lines. Now I'm in line configuration mode, and I'll say login local to say use the local user database that we just created with the username command. And we're going to say the only protocol that we're going to allow to connect into these lines is Secure Shell. And to do that, we can say transport input, and let's give some context-sensitive help, 
to see some of the different options and we're going to say SSH. And we're now done with our secure shell configuration on router R1. So let's once again visit our internet router and try to secure shell into R1. This time we're being prompted for a password because I've already given my username as part of the SSH command. I enter a password of Cisco and we're now logged in via SSH into R1. And that's a look at how easy it is to set up Secure Shell, a much preferred alternative to Telnet.